I truly don't know. I truly don't know. <laughs> Are you guys having the time of your lives? I'm definitely not trying to quit. I feel like, um, I know, is it my Bob Dylan record in the background? Okay, I'm going to see... I'm not going to even say anything. I'm just... <gasps> do you do it? It worked! First of all, I am 33 turning 34 in like a week. Shout out to Virgos. Oh, I'm sorry. <gasps> Twinsies! Take a Call drink. A placement? Is that why I'm being kicked off? That's hilarious. It's, it's health aid. It's just like, I realize that I'm in my 30s, but I still think I should be able to use Instagram. Oh, I have no idea how it works. I just post the photo <laughs> and whatever. Like, I'm like, I press the button. I'm like, where is it? <laughs> Where's the I cord? My face. Hello? Very frustrating. Danny, I'm so glad that you are here with me. And I feel like it's high time that we had a writer on a live so we can get, the, like, to all the people who are watching, this is the man who has all the information. Not to throw you under the bus, Danny, but you've got all of the secrets. All the secrets in my hair. Um, well, I'm excited to be here with the queen of outer space herself, so. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's never been said back to me. It's only been something I've called myself and it feels so good, it feels right. Wear that crown. <laughs> um, I was thinking because, you know, last season I was I had the pleasure of being a little bit in the writer's room during COVID times. They let me come in. And it was amazing, you guys, everyone watching, to to watch the writers in action and see how they break the whole season arc and they're working on, like, the character developments. Where are you guys right now? Can you say, like, how far into it you're working? Like, what your process is? Do you know what happens to me? At the end, do you know what happens, Isabel? I don't even know I'm so out of the loop. Oh boy, do I know what happens to Isabel. <laughs> <laughs> um, currently, we are writing season four. Uh, we are somewhere in the middle. We've started shooting season four right now, so. That's right, um, I do know that part. Yes, yes, go to work. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> it's like, where's Lily? Where's the call time? Um, <laughs> Yeah, we uh, it, it's been it's been a blast. It's been very odd writing season three and now season four in this sort of bubble and watching the fan reaction and seeing the stories that y'all really respond to. It's 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 been really fun and and we're just so excited and blessed to continue to tell more stories with these kooky characters and and I hope that everyone's loving what we're doing and and stay tuned for more. <laughs> Big time. It's so it's so interesting for me as an actor. This is the first season where I've actually been able to watch my work as like I, I watch tonight and tomorrow I go into work. And it usually isn't like that. Usually we're I'm watching the um, my work in the off season and then I'm like, oh, God, try to remember not to do that thing with your face. Um, and so it's been interesting to have that like, you know, immediate thing. Is it are you guys able to take into consideration what's going on fans reactions things that you're like oh that really works people are really responding yeah let's like amp that up more is it like do you have that flexibility yeah for sure i mean i think that we we love hearing everyone's reactions and and the stories that are really resonating with the fans and we definitely bring that energy into the room and and what we get most excited about is when we see uh, fans going crazy over a character pairing. And we're like, well, then we got to see more Isabel Maria this season. Is that, was it? Did people go crazy over over oh, yeah. Maribel? Oh, yeah. I know I personally felt like I feel every, you know, I still have hopes for Isabel with everybody. I'm not mm -hmm. going to rule out polyamory for Isabel long to end game because I'm like, Maribel, I'm like, okay, they're sisters, but like... Like, he, like you never it's know. far enough apart, kind of. Yeah. You know, I feel like Isabel and Rosa, I'm still like mad shipping Rosabel and then Kybel, of course. Um, which, by the way, I had always wanted the ship name to be Kissabel. Kissabel writes itself, yeah. 
it writes itself and it kisses itself. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but but that's that's happy to hear. You know, I get a lot of people being like, when are Alex and Isabel gonna hang out more? Interesting, where's my post-it? Alex and Isabel, interesting. It feels like a Schitt's Creek dynamic or something. Yeah. It feels like they could really have some fun together with being super smart. Yeah, especially because they're two characters that probably didn't ha hang out a lot in high school. I imagine, and so I'm really curious to see what their scenes are like now as adults. Totally agree. Yes, I just like I mean, talk about like a shift in relationships. I mean, Isabel's relationships have pivoted so much when you think about Rosa. Like, mm -hmm. Sorry, I murdered you. Like, but now we're friends. Like, that's a big, that's a big range for that. Yep. Person. Like Isabel and Maria were not the closest, and now like they've got the sister thing going on. I love that. Um, yeah, it's wonderful to have partners. It's, it's so fun to be now in going into the fourth season and seeing what we've been able to do, like where we've been able to go. Do you have any character arc story arcs that you're like, oh, I love this. Like, this is so, it just like cracks me up for you. Yeah, I mean, any Malik's storyline <laughs> is a storyline that I, that I particularly love. Um, I will say, I, I think it's great that you're bringing up Isabel and Rosa and Isabel and Maria. Those are two relationships that uh, I'm really invested in, both as a writer and as a fan of the show. Right. And so I think that tonight in particular sets up a lot of uh, little seeds of growth for Isabel. Right. That, like permeate throughout the whole season and even into season four. Right. Um, right. And, and, you know, and I, I love me some Echo too. I just, I need them back together. When are they going to get back together? My God, talk about chemistry. It's my heart. We've got some real chemistry on it. I just want to acknowledge to all my fans who just kindly let me know that I'm old and I was covering my mic with my pinky. I hear you and I've removed it. So uh, now you can hear me again. Um, yeah, in terms of the people who have so much chemistry on set, it's amazing watching them work and watching that come onto the screen where you like, I, ca I can't wait for Isabel to be able to have that because it's so fun watching the like romances develop and, and like unfold and the tension. You guys do such a good job of keeping us like heart wrenching, yearning, that kind of feeling of just being like, oh my God, I can't stand it. Like they need to be together. How do we like make this happen? Yeah, that's that's my favorite thing. That's what I what I love watching. It's like, oh, just just get together. Why are you guys fighting? Just get together. Just get together, together and work it out. Alex, come home. Come home. <laughs> Michael, get your shit together. For God's sake. Um, all jokes aside, this is a really big, intense episode. And part yes. of the reason that I wanted to have you come on and talk about it is I'm so proud of what you guys in the writer's room were doing and took on with this episode. And this was... I feel like directly, you know, it was related to all of the, the so many social issues that were going on during COVID, George Floyd and all of the protests that were going on and this intense tension that we were seeing suddenly um, between, you know, police and people who were trying to peace, you know, protest and have their voices heard. And this episode really like takes that on. Was that something that like, how did you guys in the writer's room decide, like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, like, take this and this is going to, like, you know, we're gonna actually actively examine this. Was that frightening? Was it exciting? What was it like? Yeah, it was, it was frightening. It was exciting. It was terrifying. It was, uh, it kept me up at night. It kept my co-writer, Alana Bennett, <laughs> up at night. Um, yep. But uh, it felt urgent and necessary we were in the writer's room and, you know, the Zoom writer's room the entire season. And, um, you know, at one point in, in time, this episode, you know, featured a poker night. <laughs> and so we were breaking this story about poker and then George Floyd and, 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 and the protests and, and the corona cases spiking. And it just everything felt like we couldn't get our heads out of it. And we were talking a lot about that in the room and not just sort of the anxiety and the sadness that was going out in the world, but sort of like, how do we rebuild? How do we come together as a community again? And then Alana and I were like, well, can we just start talking about that on the show? And and our showrunner, Chris Holly, was like, let's do it. Let's tell the story. Uh, and, and the three of us were really, and the whole entire writer's room, we were really interested in um, 
telling a story about uh, a community coming together in the face of adversity. And, you know, we're not going to fix all of the problems in Roswell tonight, but how can we take a step together collectively? And what does that mean to move forward? How do we, how can we move forward? Mm. Um, so those are sort of all the questions that we were examining tonight. Yeah. With the episode. And I mean, we have a built in like deputy, we've got the cop who's like yeah. the hero of our show. He's the good guy. And I love how the writers, you guys are able to take issues and look at them from so many different perspectives. Like it's not, it's not ever like black and white, you know, it's always presented in a way where Max struggling with himself, you know, being in the position of being a police officer during this kind of event. It's like, you know, you, you take a, such a, um, such a, a a deep look at it that's not just trying to be you know proselytize one side or the other like i feel like it's a very human examination and uh i'm so proud of our show for taking on issues like this because i feel like it's what really makes it it elevates it from just being like yeah we've got like the desire and the yearning and you know all the sexy stuff and we have the sci-fi alien cool stuff but then it's great to actually be able to take on these issues and Look at them, fold them into our stories. I'm so proud of you guys. So thank you for having the courage to do that. And um, yeah, and just taking that on and, and folding it in so beautifully. Everybody who's watching right now, you're just in for a really powerful episode. And um, I can say, especially like all of the actors do such a great job. Nathan is phenomenal in it. Um, Heather Hemmins is so Fantastic. good. This is like Heather Hemmins' episode tonight. And I'm so proud of her watching what she's done with Maria, who is, you know, a character who I, I'm so happy to have had Maria had like, you know, a bigger, more meteor role this season. So I feel like it's everybody, you guys are going to just be uh, blown away. Yeah, yeah. And if anyone's wondering about what's going on with Kyle, I would say stay tuned. Listen, those first two minutes, you do not want to miss them because some stuff's going down. And those or first off. two minutes are going to be airing in eight minutes on the East Coast. So everybody who's watching from the East Coast, I hope you're up and ready. And that if you have cable television, you have that right now ready to go because you got it's coming your way. Um, Danny, do you have any secret hopes, desires, dreams to see? Or can you even reveal that? Is there anything that you're pushing for that you're like, I would love to see, you know, um, Isabelle on a horse, for instance, just something to think about. I would love to see Isabel at the rodeo and just like <laughs> schooling all these clowns and, and winning the trophy. Um, I'm, I, I'm scared to say anything because usually the things that I'm advocating for in the room, we're like, okay, great. Let's go write an episode. I love <laughs> and that. So I want to That's, save it That's good to know. So I, from, I, now I know my in when I want to propose something. Just send it my way. Yeah. You're the one who makes it happen. But, uh, but I will say this, I, you know, what I'm, what I love most about season three is that it's very much about the relationships with our core cast and our core characters. And so any opportunity that we have to build stories around that is really exciting to me. And so I want to see, yeah, I want to see a, a scene or a storyline with Isabel and Alex. And I want to see more Isabel and, and Liz and, and, and Isabel and Max. Like, I just, I, I, I love you guys so much. You, you make all of our words shine and matter. And, and, and it's, it's just so much fun seeing you on the screen. Oh man, it's it's such a pleasure. And again, being able to get a glimpse into the writer's room to see what you guys are doing and the way that you do it and how um, conscientious you have to be of all, because we have a big ensemble, you know, we have yeah. a number of characters. So making sure that everyone's like woven together, the weave, the process of the weave was something that I was like, oh, this is so cool. Um, getting to see the ways that, you know, uh, different storylines like fold and then fold back and inform each other. Like it just is so next level. And for me as an actor to be able to get a glimpse into that was so cool. I definitely am dying to co-write an episode. Fanny, if you ever want to do that with me. Come to the dark side. I would I so love to. If you want to switch roles, like I'll just get some stilettos and- You no, could we'll be notice. Isabel. Uh, listen. First, I'll work on growing out my mustache. You Once do that the stash is established, I'll we'll swap. 
There you, you go. might have to. Well, I could also dye my hair, or you could bleach, and then you just have a little mole that you put on. That's easy. Yeah. yeah. Dude, in the makeup trailer, <laughs> I'll see when they have like a stunt girl or like when they have young Isabel or whatever, they have like little prosthetic moles that they put on. Oh, <laughs> it's like the Lily Gold mole. <laughs> I'm like, it's 3D. It's not even just like, they don't just like do a dot. They like glue on like a three-dimensional That's hilarious. Mold. I'm like, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have anything else that you're thinking about before we get going on this episode? No, I just, I hope that uh, you all like strap in because it is an hour of jam-packed action and emotion and heartache and heartbreak and twists and turns and love and tears and all that jazz. It is like chills and thrills and the tea is going to be spilled and I'm so ready for it. I'm going to go get popcorn. It, I'm actually still in mountain time, so I, I have a little bit of time before this. But for everyone else who is watching... I hope you go get a little snack, go take a pee, get comfy on your couch, and tune in because an all-new episode of Roswell, New Mexico is airing in four minutes on the East Coast. So please enjoy yourself. Danny, thank you so much for joining me. It is always a pleasure to see your face and talk to you and drink kombucha with you, and uh, I can't wait to collaborate in the future. Yes, likewise. Thanks for having <laughs> me on, and you know, good luck with, with the rest of this week, and yeah. Enjoy Thank the you episode. so much. Thank you for everything. Thank you for the words that I speak. <laughs> Thank you for saying the words. <laughs> All, right. All right. Bye, everybody. Day. Enjoy.